So good morning, everyone, and thank you for this bright and another day. And good morning to you, Mr. Anthony. I believe that right now it's not morning. Good morning, anymore. madam. And today we have a new topic. It's ideation and ideation and um, design thinking. Design thinking. Design thinking. So sorry, today it's very, very cold here. It's extremely cold. Anyway, but then before we proceed with our program, please, Mr. Anthony, can you please give us an introduction of our presenter today, Mr. Shabin Muhammad? It's very nice to have you on the program. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Anthony, can you please give us an introduction of Mr. Shabin Muhammad before we can proceed? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, dear gentle lady. A happy morning to all the participants from Malawi as well as Zambia. Again, a fresh morning. Uh, fresh morning. Thanking God Almighty for this wonderful day. And uh, I hope yesterday was an uh, uh, was a very good uh, day for us, uh, being uh, having uh, Dr. Raman Gujral, uh, who is the director of projects for EDIA. He shared plenty of information related with the uh, innovation and all. And some of you are asking about uh, 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 about your innovation ideas also. Today, we are relating the topic uh, uh, with that actually. And today's topic is fantastic topic. Ideation and design thinking to uh, uh, become more success in the entrepreneurial journey, actually. So that's how today we are going to discuss, actually. For that uh, uh, discussion, today we are having a, an excellent, uh, uh, I can say he's my uh, brother, actually, brother-like, actually. And uh, I'll share a screen about Mr. Shibin Muhammad. Now I think uh, you're all seeing Mr. T.K. Shibin Mohammed. Once again. Such a wonderful uh, personality. And he is an assistant faculty for EDII, working for uh, several states in India. And uh, you know very well, personally, with the help of uh, this uh, Shibin Muhammad, uh, n number of projects took place in, especially in South India. Actually, he used to visit institutions. In my uh, point of view, he, he may visit in the past several years uh, uh, more than uh, hundreds of institutions for conducting entrepreneur development, uh, student uh, uh, awareness uh, programs, faculty development programs, and that's the way. He is developing a lot of entrepreneurs uh, from the institutions, actually. See, his academic qualification he is an ME aeronautical engineer. He did his B.Tech with mechanical engineering. And uh, he was handling a lot of projects, actually. And he is an academician with five years of experience in guiding various technology-based startups across the state of Kerala. Not only in Kerala, he worked for uh, some other states uh, than Kerala. He pioneered in institutionalizing IEDC in various colleges. That's what I told. He, uh, his main uh, focus is to visiting institutions, visiting colleges, and uh, developing young entrepreneurs uh, uh, with his uh, uh, able uh, guidelines. Being a United Nations certified Empretech program graduate, mentored potential and existing student entrepreneurs across the state. His area of interest includes techno entrepreneurship. Internet of Things, Innovations, and Life Skills Development. Few months back, uh, some three, four, five months back, uh, I was uh, uh, visiting his place. Uh, uh, that place is uh, uh, related to the of African soil, actually. He's from a state called uh, Kerala. Uh, it related uh, uh, how uh, Africa is looking like the same way uh, Kerala is also looking, actually. Uh, five months back, I have visited uh, uh, Shibin Muhammad and he takes me to the uh, uh, IT parks uh, located in Kerala and he takes me to the uh, uh, entrepreneurs clusters uh, uh, areas which was developed by uh, these people actually. So uh, I'm very happy and uh, 
uh, fantastic today we are having such a good personality welcome uh, mr shibin mohammed to the presentation on behalf of st john the baptist university malawi on behalf of st eugene university uh, zambia we are uh, uh, rendering our uh, heartfelt welcome now the session is yours mr shibin mohammed you can take the session on your own thank you very much thanks a lot uh, anthony thank you for your kind words uh, i am indeed uh, very much enlightened by the words which anthony had provided to me uh, truth be told uh, it's not to that extent like what anthony is telling i'm not being that humble too but uh, I, i don't know whether he's like uh, it's a lot of praise to to me too so thanks a lot anyway uh, so thank you thank you dmis gbu for this uh, particular opportunity for providing me uh, to deliver the session and thank you for all the people of malawi and all the important delegates and anyone whoever is logging into the show so today uh, as by knowing we are handling a session on ideation creativity and design thinking uh, it's like uh, as madam had some uh, small issue regarding to recollect the topic uh, there's no harm there because design thinking is something quite new even though it was like uh, which has come out in the 70s the concept is not that uh, actually it's a bit new for all of us so uh, i think uh, mr uh, dr raman gujral would have uh, guided through you a process like how to start up like how to uh, gain through the voyage of entrepreneurship how to start up the entrepreneurship process and all so today's concept is like the first step like what you have to do as a first step what you have to uh, overlook or it see into while you go into the way of entrepreneurship so there are certain concepts which have been developed the first thing is like you should have a wonderful idea everyone should have a wonderful idea but usually what we see in the case of majority of the startups and entrepreneurs is like the passion dies with the idea there there are wonderful ideas coming up with the heads of the people but that passion is not carry forwarded so what do we do is there any systematic steps in which we can actually carry it forward so these things are being analyzed here today uh, by some steps which are uh, more of like a functional uh, sort of topic i'm not going to a very gen generalized topic here and uh, moreover like uh, what is the relevance of the topic today that is one of the key features what we have to look into We're seeing that the pandemic uh, or covid-19 has struck uh, to all the nations around the globe it is high time that people come out with new ideas in order to uh, overcome out in order to uh, take the opportunities which are coming in forth for the, according to the new pandemic which has come here so uh, because of that like people need to think of new ways of doing things for example like uh, we are all into like we were using the digital platforms what we are using today we, we were not using that much of a time like but today most of us has switched into digital even for e learning or even for delivering a webinar whatever it may be so these things are rapid changes so accordingly we have to implement or we have to act upon these changes which are coming towards us so especially in the time of the pandemic what can we do in order to overcome this situation that will be one of the core areas which i need you to uh, look upon after my session speaking of my topic uh, ideation creativity and design thinking so uh, uh it is basically like uh, what i require from all of you is generally it's a very uh, interactive sort of topic but i know since like we are all uh, in a uh, webinar here the amount of interaction will be quite less but still i will try to make it as interactive as possible you can shoot out your questions in the chat anytime any time of the program there's no nothing like okay i will do after this uh, after finishing my session you have to post the questions nothing like that you can do at any time shoot out the questions i am uh, welcome all the time to answer your questions here and also another one thing which i require from the participant is like uh, the topic ideation creativity should be looked upon like a child it's not like okay i am a very grown up person I, i'm maybe 32 or maybe 60 years old or 50 years old so that will be my perspective for this particular session it is nothing that serious if only you look upon this particular session as a kid through the eyes of a kid you will be able to uh, inculcate that particular values what i am trying to reach on to you 
uh, in general words if you say like uh, in order to be more creative you know like kids like small children are very creative and they have a lot of ideas in them so i need you all of you like to think like a kid that is what i require from you for for the whole session okay so i think uh, i will move on to my session now and i will just uh, share my screen with uh, the presentation i have made a small uh, presentation here okay okay the share screen option is here i am going there share so i hope it's visible to you so uh, as Anthony told you, like uh, I'm an assistant faculty for EDI. I've been with EDI for years, and that like I was a program facilitator for United Nations too. So uh, what all I have got through the learnings, like what all I have learned through my of entrepreneurship, through my small journey of entrepreneurship, is something what I'm trying to share to you today here. So first of all, the uh, activity and design thinking. I'll be delivering this topic in such a way that uh, a part I will go for ideation. Like uh, I cannot like guarantee that from a single topic or from a single webinar, all of you will be turning to a creative mindset. That is nothing which I can guarantee here, but I can try. I will tell you the means and methods in which you have to bring on creativity onto the approach or on how you do the things, okay? So first of all, I would like to start with a small question. So what will we laugh with in 20 years? That is a single question, but uh, you can always post your answers. OK, so there are many things here. Like, like you, you might uh, recollect many things. These are floppy disks. These are film-based camera, uh, the cassette players which we have, and telephone instrument, the phone, the old type of phones, which you, you might have used or maybe, I don't know, as a child or something, the typewriter. So these things are something which are quite obsolete right now, which is not at all in the pitch. So these things are something which actually we are laughing right now. When we see a floppy disk with, I remember the floppy disk had 1.38 MB uh, megabytes. That is the capacity, 1.36. And the floppy disk before that has even had a smaller uh, megabyte MB of that. So what was the thing that led to the transformation from a floppy disk just within a few span of years? Let's say 10 years, we have mo moved from floppy disk, we have moved to hard disk. We have a type of Blu-ray disk or something, which is completely different, uh, completely new tech. So these things are something which have come through rapid, process of So initially, during the stage of a camera, there was some sort of an ideation process going on. But right now, the process of ideation is quite high. I'll just tell you, for example, uh, the time it took to deliver, or time it took to find out the first telegraph machine, maybe half of the time would have taken for making the first telephone machine and even half of that or maybe no, even less lesser time would have taken for making the first mobile device right and now you know like what uh, uh, technologies are coming in the mobile device so right now when we think of a telegraph machine it actually brings a lot of uh, like it brings happiness and it brings a lot of laughter into our mind because nobody uses a telegraph right now right or a typewriter we have we all have our laptops and uh, all these things to work on so these things are something which we have to think so right now we will be using certain things in our life which we might laugh after a period of 20 years which we don't know so the, we have to think for any creative process, we have to think ahead. We have to think ahead of 20 years. I'm de developing something. I have a wonderful idea. 
what will happen to that particular idea after 20 years will it sustain or will something can replace it at a point so why ideation creativity is important for the enterprise or for, for startups there are many things like how ideation and creativity is brought about so i'll just uh, list out a few the first thing is for introducing new and innovative products the major output of ideation is coming out with new products innovative products which all the people like like uh, we have a certain mask here like which has some bluetooth with headset and like uh, all these things are there and uh, like you can see the coffee cup which is quite innovative some uh, um, met a method or a mechanism to remove the corn kernel from the corn or even a breakfast bar i think you all know my, what a breakfast bar is like uh, even uh, in particularly in the it sector of india we have uh, the people don't have enough time or all over the world the people now people do, doesn't have time at all so they have all the essential nutrients of the breakfast packed into a single bar and they are having that so these things are innovative products all these things so for introducing new and innovative products we require ideation ideation and creativity the second thing is for disruptive ways of providing support and services what do you mean by disruption disruption is actually a change in the existing norm of some something which has been done till now for example if you take the case of uber uber is like you know it's a taxi uh, providing service we have have uber eats also but i'm just uh, uh, taking the case of uber you know that uh, till now till this much time for uh, hiring a taxi we used to go all the way to uh, the place we used to go to the taxi stand or wherever the place is or we used to give a call the taxi used to come out to our home right so right now we are using an app we can use an app and we can hire a taxi similar to the taxi of eco which i think is very much popular different type of online platform we are using different platform for communication like whatsapp and skype and all like what we are doing right now stream here so these are like disruptive ways of providing support and service the same support is being provided in a different or a disruptive way so this is something which we can and use for ideation and creativity <coughs> for promotion or marketing that is the third important use of ideation and creativity If you, if you have an existing business, you can think of some other new way of promoting it or marketing your existing business. Right now, most of you, like most of us, will be moving to digital platforms. I think you have already had a session on digital marketing and, and all these platforms. So, how we are you? using the digital platform how are we that that is already we are using the
digital platform for the existing business. So these things are something which we can use for promoting the existing business which we are already having. So that is this idea a youth ideation or also like here i have shown in the bottom uh, left corner i have shown a small picture of a packaging here which i am actually like we are using for packaging soap you know like we all use soap uh, we are manufacturing soap and uh, we have soap in the market but here this particular uh, seller has used a particular ideation method an idea in which the soap is actually packed in a sack you know what it's a sack right a uh, cloth sack or maybe uh, uh, a kayak based sack or a jute sack he has packed and tightened it so this gives the impression that product is organic in nature it's a very organic product it's a healthy product even though i don't know whether that product is healthy or not but still that is the impression which it gives on the consumer so this is one of the method or marketing so you can see some which I given here uh, an ad of a watch which they got a handle for a bus or a train okay so these are some of the methods and to get onto new opportunities and challenges so opportunities and challenges it's challenges are all around us like right now we have the covid 19 situation which is going on so, so there might be like a group of people i'm not telling like it's it's all like we have to face that in a bold manner like we are or we, we all are afraid even i'm afraid of the situation but it's not, not not like there will be a group of people who will always lament on tell that okay this is something which okay my business is down because of the pandemic my business is down because of the covid 19 situation i don't don't have anything to do about it. but there are people who can think innovatively and tell and okay how can i meet this particular situation and how can i adjust my business according to the particular situation i have just given some example the automobile industry as you might be knowing has come to a major downfall in the in one uh, single century in the biggest downfall in the century right now but right now so what is, is some uh, major thing what we can do so how to upcome the automobile industry so there are many methods like that is somewhere where we have room for ideation and creativity there are no people traveling outside there is a plastic ban which is happening just before the covid 19 uh, attack or something like all, all over the world the people were trying to, all the countries were com coming out with ways to remove the plastic so there were many interest industries which came out with 
cornstarch based uh, plastic bags and all which i have just shown here so these are the th things which we can actually act according to the pandemic like the pandemics and all things will come to us the situation might come but we have to act accordingly we have like digital services and digital platforms for transferring money like paystack which, which i think you my guys might be knowing which is again a startup from uh, the african region we have the when, whenever there was a crisis for the oil we had the electric cars come to the market and big big industry it's like Tesla Motors and all had made the uh, venue there. So these things like uh, whenever, like that is the thing when we are faced with a situation, when we are faced with a difficulty, don't think it as a difficulty, but think of what is the opportunity which we can gain from that. From that particular challenge, how we can act according to that opportunity and make something creative out of it. For that, you require generous amounts of ideation and creativity to be done. So, as I told you before, uh, the whole session, today's session, I'll be dividing into three portions creativity. The ideation and problem solving and design thinking approach. The three uh, parts of my session will be divided in this particular uh, manner. So, uh, again, Telling you, I will show you, or I will show you some methods in which you can inculcate the met, uh, the thing that you you can can uh, bring on uh, the creativity approach whenever you do things, or whenever you go about your business or startup or whatever, or maybe even in your day-to-day -day activities. But but it is not that like okay the session is over i will try to be creative i can be creative that is not the thing creativity is in born with everyone that is true but you have small steps with which i believe will help you for that so generally what are the creative steps what is the basic steps for what is happening during creativity in business or what what do you mean by the creative thinking that is a basic science uh, as all the psychologists have agreed there are just four steps for creativity the first step is preparation the second step is incubation third step is elimination and the fourth step is verification so how do you do in how do you bring this step 
it's on to your side. So I will just give you an example before going to the tips. I'll just give you a small story. You all might be knowing about the story of uh, uh, Archimedes. You 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 know Archimedes principle. I presume, yeah. All of you might be knowing the Archimedes principle, right? So he, he uh, uh, jumped into the water and uh, the water came out and all these things like you might be knowing. So uh, accordingly, like if I recall uh, the story very well, uh, what was the actual Archimedes principle? The weight of an object. Uh, I'm not going much into physics here but the weight of an object is uh, directly proportional to the or the water displaced by that object or maybe the density of that object is directly proportional to the uh, what the uh, density of that particular metal or the material is directly proportional to the uh, weight of the object or maybe the water displaced by that particular uh, object. So this is Archimedes principle. So what happened, what's in the story? Uh, the king, the king, like whenever Archimedes was in the uh, Royal uh, scientific advisor or something for the king, and the king had a crown which was made of gold, which he had told that it should be fully made of gold. And when he got the crown ready, he he had a doubt whether there was some sort of other material or metal mixed into the crown, right? That was the story, as I recollect. I think you all guys know the story, but I'm just telling it again. So, what he did is he called Archimedes and told that, okay, I have a crown here. I want you to find out how much gold is there and how much is the other metal or whatever material is there. It's a very difficult thing. The whole thing is like mixed and everything. We can't actually find out what is the actual amount of gold there or what is the actual amount is difficult so Archimedes was thinking about this he was completely thinking and he was not getting an answer then he thought okay fine i'll just keep it aside i'll keep my problem aside i'll do something different i'll go and take a bath and the rest of the story, you know, he jumped into the uh, tank or the bathtub and he suddenly cried out Eureka, he came out running naked and all these things is something which you know. So what happened? What is the idea? Yeah. He found out that like the amount of water displaced whenever you come or whenever you come to like when you, you, you push a object into water, the amount of water displaced is directly proportional to the density of that particular material or that object which you're putting inside and accordingly if you take a crown made of gold and other metal and if you put it in water the 
amount of water displaced will be completely different if it is completely full of gold or if it is mixed with other metals because the density of gold and density of other metals are completely different. It's a very simple process. So how does we can and like we can kind of get the creativity here. Now let, let's go back to the slides here. We have the first step that is preparation. The first step is recognize the problem and find the problem which requires some creativity, which requires some sort of problem solving. Try to find out much information about the problem and consciously try to come up with an answer. It's consciously try to come up with an answer. I'm not telling come up with an answer, just try to come up with an answer. So here in the case of Harkham Deez itself, he know about the density, if only because he knows about the difference in all things. So whenever you are faced with a problem, the first thing is like you have to understand the problem, understand all the information regarding the problem which is facing you. That is the first step. Prepare yourself, prepare about a problem for yourself. The second step is incubation. Incubation is the second step for creative thinking. Do something unrelated to the problem. Think of something else and allow your mind to unconsciously work on the problem. So here, Arkham Dave, a problem in mind, he decided to take a bath, which is something unrelated. He's doing something completely unrelated of the problem. This is called the incubation stage. This psychologist that if some problem is uh, constant, constantly tormenting your mind, just keep it aside for a while. Try to do something else, something in your mind. And unconsciously, that solution will come out. I don't no, please don't ask me. I'm not a psychologist, but it's a proven thing. You can even try it out. So do something unrelated to the problem. Think of something completely different thing and allow your mind to unconsciously work on that problem. Because unconscious processing is more effective than conscious processing. If you answer for this particular problem, it is called conscious processing. Making me happy because your mind of mind really think. Step is keep aside your problem for some time. A realize and the fourth step will work creative. It's your problem. God will work out or not. So the mission and wave. You, you can uh, try out this particular approach whenever you need to think creatively or whenever you need to address a problem in a creative manner. Now, whenever it is like, we have to think outside the box. It's very easy, like for me to sit here and tell, okay, for example, this which your print, there's no whatever thought process is, con okay, X, Y, Z, condition, I'm not being whatever, I'm not uh, going much to that. So when you think respect the great box, you take it for doing, uh, uh, for uh, deliver a thought in a different way. Why can't that, you take the case of the uh, great innovation of the box and or basic, comp basic components of creativity. The, I'm not, I'm born as not creative. You are generally among the 90 or 89. The thing is like, to what extent you are using your brain? That is the uh, general uh, thing here, included in all of us. Just to how extent we are using that come here. What is, one is the expertise. So expertise is the, from our engineering or degree or professional things. We, we have the thing way or the understanding of how the things should be done. We have the understanding of maybe the software should be done is known to us so that is the expertise the technical procedural and the intellectual knowledge is expertise the second thing is the creative thinking skill we have the expertise and the knowledge but that doesn't mean that whenever a problem is presented to us we can approach it in a way which is easier which is easier for example if uh, I 
uh, uh, students okay uh, i'll give a page maybe i'll give this particular slide and tell them okay i need 100 copies 100 copies of this particular thing which everyone should make and bring it tomorrow it's an assignment right i can tell 100 copies or maybe 100 is too much i know okay 50 50 copies of this particular thing everyone should every single candidate should make it and bring tomorrow if i'm just for example for an example i'm telling a person can make or sit and draw three circles in 50 different sheets that is one thing definitely that is the process which we know to make a copy you have to draw but i just told you have to make a copy right you can just draw one sheet and take a photostat or photocopy or xerox of the rest of the 49 that is also a method or you can do some other methods in which you can draw make a like you can put a sheet a carbon paper in between each and draw in such a way that all the impressions come on all the papers this is also a method so for a single problem there are numerous methods n number of methods in order to approach it it is just up to you like how flexibly or imaginatively you can approach that particular problem that is the skill or the creative thinking skill the third one is the motivation the motivation is what, what motivates you to make or think creatively is it intrinsic motivation is it is pushing you to be doing like that if you're working in a company if there is a particular project which needs to be done in a very creative manner a creative project it's not necessarily that maybe you love your job it's not like you don't love your job but it's not necessarily like you are doing it out of your interest for that particular thing it might be your boss is pushing you and telling okay uh, look you have to do this today or Anthony, you have to do this particular thing today and you have to do uh, you have completed that is an extrinsic motivation a motivation from outside intrinsic motivation should come from inside that generally happens during entrepreneurship that's a beautiful entrepreneurship because it's our company we are working for our company the motivation to or the passion to bring that particular company to a greater height it's greater heights is from within us it's intrinsic motivation that will boost your creativity that will force you to be creative when these and the motivation come together that is where the magic happens of creativity that is where generally people tend to be more creative that is the portion where beautiful entrepreneurs are born so just i have to show these are the three components which you need to focus on which you, you need to focus on to be creative it is not that i i was not born creative i, I was born stupid there's no, nothing like that every person i'm and i'm again focusing it's not even like i have told uh, in uh, just some time back i told about a medical condition but even though i believe that all people are special they have some sort of a creativity which god has put into them maybe some maybe one factor might be higher maybe one factor might be even uh, lower but it, it will be it is there you just have to find it out and work on that okay so here i have a small test here which uh, i know i am not able to do the test because it's a webinar but still i will tell you what is the functionality of the test which you can try out which you can try out which you you needn't share with us or which you can just try out it's called the Torrance test of creative thinking the ttct test which is a worldwide well-renowned psychological test for understanding your two figures what is a Torrance test i will tell you what the torrent test is and how do we measure it and all these things i will just like if i have one figure here which has some sort of a uh, drawing it's an incomplete drawing some thing it's drawn something here i have the second figure also with some sort of an incomplete drawing the torrent tests require you to draw as number of possible diagrams 
can make as number of figures or as number of objects as number of pictures using this particular figure in that particular picture or this particular drawing in that this you can actually this particular picture these two are two distinct pictures i'm again telling you two distinct pictures but you you can make any picture you can draw any picture but it should include such a diagram a diagram like this and also you can uh, for the second picture also you can include any number of uh, figures but it should include this particular diagram shown here so this is one of the torrents test it is called complete the incomplete so uh, maybe like i can give you one or two minutes which you can just try it out or uh, yeah uh, anthony I'll just show you the picture again. Okay. Fine. So I'll just move on. Okay. Uh, I think uh, maybe uh, can you just show in the uh, like how can you just tell me? How many of you are able to draw, draw these pictures? Particular picture and draw as many pictures you like. Okay, fine. I'll just move on to the next slides. Torrents test of creative thinking. So, how we measure the TTCT or the divergent thinking test? So, this is called the divergent thinking approach, which is just the opposite of the convergent thinking approach. So, what do you mean by convergent thinking and divergent? Uh, 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 I'm just asking you a question. Uh, what is the capital of London? just a question the capital of london sorry <laughs> i i got it wrong what is the capital of the united states of america the capital of united states of america is washington dc right uh, the capital of uh, sorry i just thought of capital of uk but it came out london sorry so the capital of usa is washington dc so how it came like how it came like when i asked you the question what is the capital of the united states of america you had the whole world map in your mind you had then your mind suddenly moved on to uh, the USA, the map of USA, and from there it suddenly moved on to Washington DC, right? That is the general method how our mind works. Or if I ask you what is the capital of Russia, your mind will go to the map of the whole world, and then the mind goes to the map of uh, Russia, and then it moves on to the particular city or city of. Uh, in our mind we have a set of methods which we have thought like this is the method in which our mind should move for the thinking or the thought process we have here what we have here is a divergent thinking method or the torrents test of uh, thinking the torrents test of creativity is actually working on the divergent thinking method so what is the divergent thinking so in according to the divergent thinking we have four different uh, steps here which is fluency elaboration flex elaboration flexibility and originality so what are the four fluency is the ability to produce a large number of ideas for a particular problem the uh, ability to produce example i had just many draw which has these two particular diagrams right so that is actually an element of fluency if you can uh, draw maybe uh, some people are able to draw maybe 5 or 10 for a particular problem 5 10 15 for a particular problem that is called fluency they are able to generate a large amount of the creativity the second one is elaboration 
the ability to the ability to enhance ideas by providing more detail some people like they will be just uh, like when i told them to draw for this particular figure they'll be just drawing one figure but they'll be trying to make it as much detailed as possible they'll be for example this looks like uh, maybe uh, a mountain all this in this particular figure they'll try to bring so that is called that is one of the element of creative or elaboration maybe some people are having elaboration uh, creativity uh, in, inside them some are not having that i don't know next is called flexibility the ability to see things in different ways so whenever i have here maybe i have this particular figure the second uh, in this form itself but maybe it can be like uh, you can think differently it might be something completely different than what we have not thought of. okay and the fourth one is originality the ability to come up with completely unique ideas completely unique which is completely out of the world ideas so these are the four elements of creativity called fluency elaboration and flexibility and originality but what i have to tell here is it is not necessary that all of you will be having all these four elements of creativity inside one person two some person might have three out of the four so it is just you you're like you have to decide how much or you have to test for yourself you can test for yourself from the torrents test how much you have and i'll just show you an example of the torrents test which we have completed so here i am showing you some examples which many participants have drawn so here you can see there is completely new ideas there is this particular figure implant here you can here see a dinosaur a dinosaur uh, eating some or maybe a shark eating some fish or maybe a clown an eye so these things are all sort of the creativity which has come from the torrent again from the second figure you can see here a creativity the drawings which have done from the ttcd so i'm not i'm just showing some examples here so this is just for your reference okay so again i'm telling you the four elements the fluency is the ability to produce large number of ideas whenever a single problem is given to you elaboration is how much can you provide more detail to a single problem some people they'll just draw some small flower or something that is not elaboration you have to elaborate it some people have that sort of a creativity the flexibility is flexibility is to ability to see things in completely different way and the originality is to come out with completely unique ideas so these things are given here now that is all about creativity and now i'm going to uh, your the next part of the program which is called ideation what do you mean by ideation that is the next step of creativity now you have inculcated creativity within you now you have to promote ideation or you have to go on with the ideation process so ideation is a creative process of generating developing and communicating new ideas which might be some sort of a visual or concrete or, or abstract sort of thought ideation is basically an element of thought which can generally be visual concrete or abstract and it is i communicating that particular idea so there is like three steps there are many stages like first of all we have to innovate which is generally creativity itself ideation moves from creativity or innovation to development to actualization you know development and actualization so for effective ideation how do we do uh, proper ideation how can we do uh, ideation 
generally we say that we can do proper ideation whenever we are in a group and all these things brainstorming all these things are there as ideas of uh, creativity and ideation but one thing which i have to tell you is whenever you have a big group the ideation results will be worse believe me don't go for a very big group for ideation because there will be a lot of conflict of ideas an ideal group is a small group <clears throat> generally for startups and entrepreneurs three or four people don't go for a group of 10 people sitting together and uh, bringing out an idea that is uh, completely not the uh, idea of ideation go for a small group four or five okay break out of your comfort zone that is one of the most important element of ideation you have to break out from your comfort zone think beyond the uh, beyond your uh, comfort zone beyond the box for getting out new ideas so like for example if uh, i'm just giving you an example if you are always in your comfort zone uh, you cannot come out with new opportunities to tap out new challenges right because always you have been conditioned your mind has been conditioned to act in that comfort zone communicate the desired outcome the third one the outcome communicated well that is the third step the minds should be open the minds you should have an open mind it is not like when your teammates, your teammates are four or five, are telling, okay, so we have such an idea. It is not like you should have a mind in which it's closed. It's not like you, you will be thinking, okay, no, no, I cannot listen to this guy because his idea is bullshit. It won't work out. It's not like that. Your mind should be open. Open minds are a must. Break the ice to break the idea. Whenever you form in a group, it's not like you all have to be sitting shy and thinking, okay, what if I tell and people laugh at my idea? No idea is a bad idea. In ideation, the general idea is no idea in this world is a bad idea. Every the idea can be evaluated and decided whether it is feasible or not feasible. Not like bad or not bad. There is nothing like bad idea, good idea. So you have to break the ice. Get out of your shyness. And tell or communicate the idea to the group. Judgment-free zones equate to more diverse ideas. That's a very important point. Whenever you go for an idea with your team, preconceived idea in your mind, telling that this is the only way that this particular problem can be solved. That is called, you have come already with a judgment. Whenever you come to an ideation, don't come with a judgment in your mind. You have to come with your mind free of judgment. Then only you can think of, of new and new ideas. For example, if I am coming for, the, uh, for an idea for designing a new lab, or maybe a new mobile phone, which, which will be in my mind is that, okay, I need a very good processor, a very good uh, display screen, uh, the Wi-Fi connectivity should be good, it should be handy, all these things. These are judgment zones that which we have in our mind that this is the idea of a good mobile phone or a good uh, smartphone or whatever. So break out of the judgment-free zones because maybe that might not be the idea of a good smartphone. Maybe or the consumer likes, which will be completely free of your judgment. 
think out of the conventional. That is the basic thing. The next one is a clearly communicated process. It's not, not just like you are telling, okay, this is a particular idea which I have, or this is a particular process which we should move on. You should have a communicated and tell that this is the way in which we can go about making this happen. It is not like we cannot, okay, I have an idea but i don't know how it can be done that is uh, not a problem which it can happen that that is thing the next one is structure all the process appropriately if you have to move for your process step one step two step three step four you have to which is the first step to one which will be step two which will go to step three you have to structure it properly the last one is involve the right kind of people I'm not telling you have to uh, get all the brainy and the intelligent people to your group and do the ideation. No, that's not what I mean. Involve the right people. The right people is the people with the right attitude. People with the right mindset to create some sort of a not only the people who are intelligent who should come for ideation the people with the correct attitude to solve the problem can also be good people for the ideation process so this is basically the effective ideation process and for effective ideation we have again another for proper ideation we have a tool called scamper maybe you would have heard of it it's very 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 famous and very common tool called scamper scamper stands for s stands for substitute c stands for combine a adapt m modify or magnify p is purpose e is eliminate or minify and r is rearrange or reverse so this s c a m p e r you can utilize or you can try out for any of your problem or getting out a good idea particular problem or your company has a third in this throughout the years or as a method try to bring out a substitute method or maybe a product which for that particular product the next is combine try to combine to act understand this to create a new idea adapt the tap to the particular end product try to modify try to make it small or uh, make it big for him the purpose try product or particular uh, method and the next one is eliminate into a use Try the minify option or try to reverse these are for the method work on here we have you know this product you might be knowing it's so which they have used a lot of ideation process called scamper into their particular products like it that original idea the first one is substitute so what have netflix kitkat tried out they have tried out substitute the s of scamper substitute chocolate please chocolate with milk and try to do the marketing try to bring out a new product through ideation scamper. The second one is combine. They have tried to combine for this Kit Kat. They have, but they have tried to bring out the new app that into another product. They have tried to leave me. They have tried it out. They have tried to adapt the Kit Kat to an ice cream and try to sell it. Modify a multiply version of the particular single Kit Kat. Out of Kit Kat. A Kit Kat uh, based like you, you know, the Horlicks or the uh, Boo. Eliminate. They have eliminated the unwanted portion and they have made it in the single bar kit cat which can be used by a person maybe uh, which is affordable by uh, any person who, who can't afford a big kit cat they can afford a small pinch and made it into small sized uh, bite which can be used like small small biscuits like small small uh, 
uh, bar, toffee, toffee type Kit Kats they have tried to use. So these are, so this is how like one product is just an example, how we are using the, the scamper for ideation. So th there are numerous products where we can particularly use scamper that is substitute, combine, adapt, modify or magnify, purpose, change the purpose, eliminate and rearrange or reverse. So this is one of the method in which you can use the ideation process to create a new product, create a, a, so maybe be in your job, maybe in your life, whatever. So once you have formed the solution, how do you evaluate your idea? How do you know whether your idea is or the uh, solution that you got for your idea is correct or wrong, or maybe it is uh, too much over evaluated or too much over stressed solution? How do you evaluate it? Especially if it's a business idea. I'm going only the concept of a business idea here. The first thing is is the product or prototype out of your idea good in your opinion and in the market? That whether you have designed a product or product prototype, whether your idea will be welcoming for the customers, whether it will be good for the customers in the market yourself. The second one is what will be the market demand status for this product? What will be the demand status for this particular product? When you get to the market, will there be a demand for it? Or will just people just uh, look at like some other product and just move it like that aside? The third one is what segment you should concentrate on, especially in the market or uh, the product or the idea. What is the particular segment that you have to bring out your product into? Maybe it's for old people, maybe it's for young people, maybe it's for a mix of both. The for, next one is will you get any sort of revenue out of it? Will you get any sort of revenue out of it, out of your particular idea or out of your particular product or prototype? Next one is a pricing. How can you price it? If it's a very good idea or if you're going or selling your idea to some person, and how do you do that? There are many strategies for pricing. I'm not going much to that. And next one is, what type of marketing system can you implement to bring your idea onto the masses? Or how can you communicate your idea to the whole world that I have this wonderful idea? What is the marketing system that you're going to implement? Is it a conventional marketing system or is it some sort of a new digital form you're going to implement? <clears throat> and the next one is, what is a similar kind of idea which is available in the market, which is a very important question which you should ask. If it's currently available in the market. So these are the questions which you have to ask before going or coming out with your idea or forming a product or a business for your idea idea or how you do the evaluation so have you evaluated a business idea still or is it not evaluated if you have not evaluated try to answer these questions and try to do the evaluation if you have not evaluated there is another X tool which i think would have have been covered here by new four sections for the thought analysis called the strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. What are the strengths? Like for any product, you will you will be doing the SWOT analysis. Similarly, for any idea, you can do the SWOT analysis, which is a strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. Here, the strength and opportunities are helpful. Are something which are helpful for 
idea or your business or your work or whatever the strength and weakness is of internal origin it is something which is coming from your idea from your product the opportunities and threats are external origin are completely out of the uh, things which are completely external you know uh, the thing which is something which you don't have control of okay so strength is something which is helpful which is come which is the strength of your idea which is the strength of your product you can list out all the strengths here if you have any weakness you can list out all, all the weakness of your product here something which needs to be rectified maybe there is some room for improvement there so those things you can uh, particularly think of all the opportunities in the environment is promoting or providing you for promoting your idea yeah there will be a lot of opportunities for you for promotion of your particular idea or product maybe a good market or maybe uh things or looking forward for that opportunity so that will be an opportunity for you also so that is one of the opportunity the threats are yes these are the threats which might come for your idea that's why i have kept the opportunities and threats in the external origin and the strength and weakness as internal origin that is internal for your product and business so you can do a swot analysis you can do a swot of your idea you can do a that's what your strength of you all the things which can help and, and strength will be opportunities and threats you have to find out what are the strengths and strengths and opportunities and work on that because that is helpful for achieving your objective and after that because that is harmful for the objective so that is how you do the swot analysis and that is how we do the design or uh, we sorry the ideation part of the process or ideation work so i have completed here the creativity and the ideation process here and now i am going to the final section that is design if i'm going a bit fast this is how how actually we do with ideation so so in general all these things are thought and that's why i told you i need your minds to move fast according to me so that is design if you require you can take a one minute break here so if you have any comments till now you can just uh, uh, shoot your okay fine so here we go to the final part of our session that is design and design thinking so design thinking is a completely new concept that according to you is design that is what i want to know it's like uh, doing this doing that or uh, design is making something which is quite attractive or making something which looks quite good all these things can be told in the concept of design but actually what is design for people that is generally what we say is creating solutions for people actually design we can't say actually so i'm going to tell a small story here i'm maybe you would have heard the story already which is called the buddha of oakland uh 
so you can just listen to the story and then we can move on to the top topic okay so uh, uh, there was a city uh, you know the oakland oakland is a city in california in united states so oakland had uh, uh, like many people living there like the, they were uh, as, as you know in the us like people from different continents come and live in us like maybe from asia africa australia uh, south america a lot of people from all the different parts of the world were coming so we had like a particular place in oakland called the east 19th and street and 11th avenue the 19th street and 11th avenue so there we had a particular median you know what's a median right a traffic median an intersection where all the traffic meets was there and just opposite the median there lived a man called dan stevenson his name was dan stevenson and oakland was uh, the city was not uh, like a very safe and uh, the people were not that much uh, uh, well mannered they were rough not uh, the polished manner type and what happens is there was illegal dumping there you know dumping right the waste we take from the home we dump it that is called illegal dumping so people used to dump all the waste and everything to this particular median when it was constructed. And Dan Stevenson, the person, he used to live just opposite to that of that median. His house thing, he sees all the waste in front of his home, just opposite the road in front of the median. And it used to be a very, uh, very sight for him, an ugly sight for him in the morning. So he used to get tired of it. He used to complain to the authorities there. He complained a number of times. The authorities would come, clean out all. The next day, the waste would just come from to that median. So what he did was he went and I, I presume he you, we all know who is Buddha. He took a statue of Buddha and he placed it in the middle of the median. Because, uh, because of the crime rate, some people want people to dump there. So what was his idea is like, Buddha is actually a neutral sort of person. It's not like Buddha is not associated, uh, uh, like uh, he's uh, not associated to a very this uh, sort of religious type and all actually it's buddhism is there but i'm not telling like buddha is actually a very neutral person because all of us love buddha even the uh, christians even the hindus the muslims or all over the world people love buddha because life was quite good it's a teaching for all so what he did was he placed a statue of buddha there and he attached it with the iron rod and everything. And that day, some people tried to steal it, obviously, because of the crime rate and everything. Some people tried to steal it, but they couldn't steal it because it was attached. After two or three days, the dumping slowly stopped. The illegal dumping of the waste in that area slowly stopped there. And people stopped dumping. Thing. And according along with that, after four months, after four months of uh, uh, the the thing, after four months of attaching the Buddha statue, someone came and painted the whole statue white to make to show that it was pure. This people started coming and give uh, started giving off offerings in front of the statue, like like flowers, putting flowers in front. The statue. They started putting flowers. Some some of them would put fruit, fruits and all, and keep in front of the statue. And after that, after some more time, people started coming and worshiping like a shrine in front of the statue. And slowly, they started building that Buddha. They uh, built a shelter 
with uh, all the lights and everything they built a shelter and after that they slowly started bringing other idols and other statues there and kept it as a shrine they dedicated it, the whole place as a shrine so the ultimate idea was like what was the ultimate idea is like uh people the whole area changed the whole place has changed the whole uh, uh area changed from a very different place and now it's a very and finally you won't believe now right now like as of 2019 82 percentage of the crime rate 82 percentage of the crime rate reduced after keeping the statue buddha in that, that particular place uh, because of the statue the crime rate has reduced but more of the people have moved to worshiping the shrine and moving to the shrine so i'm just giving you a timeline here what was such it was like in 2011 2011 it was like this and 2014 it was uh, like this to concrete 2017 you can see smaller smaller uh, like buddhas and smaller statues coming nearby and all of them have a small roof okay and this is the picture in 2019 it has got a grill and protection with night light and everything so this this is how the Oakland Buddha had changed. And the life of the people have changed there. People have become more productive. The crime rate, the prostitution, gambling, everything has come down. 82 percentage. So what is the idea here? What is the idea here? The idea is like, what is the root cause of the problem? In Oakland, there was a lot of problems among the people. Maybe they were the crime rates were high and all these things were there. But was what was the root cause? Is it because of a Buddha statue? Maybe. But here the, the idea is even with the help of a Buddha statue, it was totally unrelated to the problem. We were able to address a lot of problems from that particular region, right? So this is the concept of design, or this is the concept of design or design thinking. It is not necessary that you need a particular sort of solution which you have implanted in your mind to solve a particular sort of problem. Or the root cause might be different. Maybe the root cause might be different for a particular problem which needs to be identified and which needs to be worked upon so that proper solutions might come so here i'm going to show you some examples of bad designs i'm again telling you this design and design which were not good some sort of a bad design so these are some of the examples of bad designs so here you can see that just there was there is like the opening is here if you open the door itself you can see that there's a step here which is a very dangerous thing it's an example for a bad design uh, then we have the second uh, picture we have the picture of a hospital the hospital has like some person thought that this, this might be a very good idea for uh, decorating the flooring of a hospital but it looks like a like uh, you know it's a wayfinder you know what's a wayfinder right we have a particular way or we, we have a particular decoration or some sort of a description on the ground which shows which way we have to move so this is a wayfinder that which we they have used in the hospital so do you think it's a good idea for a hospital no it looks like a pool of blood right and here it is again of carpet design which they have used for a step the carpet design which they have used for a step you can see that it is all of made of multiple multiple colors this is actually a bad design
now you can see here again some bad designs here they, uh, this is a company called nice which they have put the soda lime soda and the vinegar in the same like people might confuse it for uh, the uh, liquid the vinegar uh, or the the con confuse the vinegar for a, f a fresh water lime or and they might drink it like that here you can see a book which is written no more plastic it is a book against and here there is an ad of a person outside the supermarket it's written thanks for shopping with us but it looks like the person is trying to throw a pineapple onto our face right <laughs> So these are ideas of bad design, which have a negative impact on the person or the person's mind. Again, we have an idea of bad design here. It's a, uh, a door for a, what's the problem here. It, is, it was meant to know, like distinguish whether a person is inside or not, but still it's a very bad design here. Here, some sort of a person thought that that flushing thing and the cleaning thing can be incorporated into one. but it's not at all a good design you can easily think out why because once we do the first the picture for a hospital this picture like it, it can be seen that whenever we move to a hospital this will be the case the father mother and the kid it looks like they're hanging right <laughs> so these are bad designs So again, another bad design example, the bathroom, just to see whether someone is getting high portion. It's just more like uh, some people have designed it for people with wheelchair to move easily on the step. They have kept this high rollers. So it's like a high roller ride. And here, this design is like they have kept a grill here the grill the drainage grill just below the door and the lock the lock of that door so just imagine if you take out the key and if you try to open the lock suddenly the key falls it will correct go or, or it will go right into this hole which you can never retrieve and also some roads some road construction some kids play things you can see an elephant this is a, a play it is in a park it's a very very bad design experience here so, so these are things these things. so good design i'm uh, showing you there was a uh, this thing of volkswagen's fun theory design at sweden in in a particular railway here along with the stairs so in order to promote Volkswagen, what the piano notes here? Believe me, it's not just a each the different noise. The people using the escalator came down using the stairs. Use the end of the piano. you all like would have undergone maybe the MRI scanning machine to this sort of graph particular boy or that girl, and then they go through the kids from the change the mind of that MRI. The good designing the device to arrive at the station. Actually. Some be silent from four or you open the in another method there will be which has furniture here so these are all skills promote so there are many things out here the innovators DNA, the innovation of the kids with something and design skills you have to reflecting thinking don't worry so design thinking the whole school of thought design thinking problem when you're conf uh, confronted with any problem with a problem find the linear approach you have to focus on the solution Ching. you have to immerse in under step of design thinking and the most important step is the problem or my field design thinking some systematic approaches to design thinking empathize empathize but e details like empathize like the cut in the shoes what they actually maybe one round problem the next step which you choose is from which you can come the third portion you have you can first type a small rough model of the type you have to make us your idea you hand it over you hand it you have to test it with the car have in mind i second you have to listen to them make of the problem you're testing do the solution focus thinking and a problem focusing approach generally what in your studies trying to get solution for that but and find out which 
So these are the solution for the design thing. And we have to go to that is called divergent thing by speak out to the people particular problem. Or if a community has a particular problem, you, you speak to maybe 10 or 20 people and uh, entrepreneur or uh, a student of design thinking, you have to note each and every problem down. You have to ask some questions again to understand the deeper concepts of what is actually the haunting them. It might be completely un unrelated thing. Don't know. We don't. It might be completely. So. Uh, Section, we have to empathize with the crowd. We have to speak with them, understand it. Finally, we have to go to the definition stage. You speak with 10 or 20 people, understand all.
Hello. Yeah, can you see me? Yes, Mr. Shibin. Yeah, uh, there was some network issue, I guess, right? Yes, uh, it, proceed now. It's okay? I hope. Yeah, it's okay. So the video was uh, I think, shown? Uh, yeah, a little bit we uh, received the, your audio breakings. Okay. Still, still you're uh, receiving the audio breakage? Yes, yes. So let me just see. Uh, I'll just connect it to a different network. Uh, 